Think lead core lines obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. on the fly right there right on that structure i was marking them and i got them right there nice kind of called my shot there i was seeing marks on that structure and sure enough i put on that fly threw them and almost an instant hookup on the uh the underwater camera so that is awesome be even more awesome if I land this fish and we see what it is. That was a bright orange trolling fly, 25 feet deep, 1.5 miles an hour. And like I say, there's a bunch of structure there, a bunch of marks. It looked like there was some bait mixed in with it. Um, just good looking stuff and hey, it paid off. Oh, nice fish. Nice holdover rainbow. go <laughs> oh yeah that is just a uh, a beautiful little rainbow he just pounced all over that orange fly let me get him back in the lake here and uh, we will get that fly there he goes Come on buddy we will get that fly back down to about 25 feet and uh, see if anything else is interested in it I'm hoping to catch a nice brown here but uh, those little pan sized rainbows they're a lot of fun Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Howdy folks, I'm Cal Kellogg, and this is the Go Fish Cam, and this thing is teaching me a lot about trout and salmon trolling. Um, today's lesson, trout holding depth, and this, this applies to salmon too. So, you know the drill, you go out to a lake, Trout prefer, you know, a 56 degree water temperature, a little above, a little below, but they're looking for 56 degree water to hold in. That's where they feel the most comfortable. That's why today, the fish at Lake Shasta, the rainbows, they're 60, 70 feet deep. They gotta go down that deep to find that preferred water temperature. Up at French Meadows Reservoir, where I've been spending a lot of my time, that depth is 25 feet. That's where most of the fish are holding right now. That's where that sweet temperature is. So. Get to the lake, get to French Meadows, put your gear down at 25 feet, start trolling. You got no problems, right? You're gonna start catching fish. Yes, but you're not gonna maximize the amount of fish you catch unless you dial in the zone where you're trolling, and that's where this camera has really helped me. Troll around in open water, 25 feet deep. I catch the occasional fish, and I see fish come in on the gear, they don't like it, they look at it, they don't want to hit and they peel off. You know, I'm getting X amount of activity. If I move into shoreline structure, if I find structure at the same depth that the trout prefer holding, the number of fish I see on the camera goes up just substantially. I, I would peg the number at five, six, seven to one, you know, fish on structure versus fish that I encounter in, in just straight open water. And uh, it's really been eye-opening to me. I expected to see more fish on structure, but think about it. Trout and salmon, they're open water predators. I didn't expect structure to have such a profound influence on concentrating the fish, but it does. I've got a segment here, um, you might have saw it, I'm gonna paste it on right here, where I'm trolling over a reef and Fish after fish after fish come out and look at my gear. And I actually ended up catching one fish on that reef before I got snagged. But the bottom line is, when I got inshore, when I found structure that, you know, coincided with a 25 foot depth, it was alive with fish. If I went offshore and just trolled at 25 feet deep, I would cross paths with the occasional fish and catch the occasional fish. But again, 
no comparison so you know put that in your hat keep that in your mind next time you're out fishing when you determine that depth and you're out in open water move in shore look for a big prominent point a big bluff some kind of a prominent structure maybe it's a hump maybe it's a reef whatever it is find that area where the fish is preferred depth you know is 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 in in proximity to structure and work that area i got an area at berryessa that i think uh that this really applies to if you fish berryessa you know the spot you're coming out of the uh of the narrows going into the main lake and there's that big kind of rock slide feature there i can't tell you how many times i've gone in there got in tight to that wall at whatever depth i was trolling and caught trophy kokanee and kings right there on that face i caught a five pound king there years ago i've caught several kokanee pushing 20 inches right there all in close proximity to the structure, close proximity to that rocky wall, but at, at that preferred depth, usually, you know, 50, 60 feet deep in that area. So anyway, moving forward, explore the structure, work the proper depth, and I think you're gonna be yelling fish on a lot more often than you would be if you were just out there grinding around blindly in open water, hoping to encounter fish. Again, Structure is just another one of those factors that concentrates fish, and anytime the fish are concentrated, the advantage goes to the angler. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm out of here for now. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. Woo. Wow, that was a that was a strike and a half. Wow, that was crazy.